life. Hey, I'm excited today. About three years ago, we, when we launched Lifeway Church five years ago, a few years after that, I began to ask God to invest into me the five-fold ministry, which meant surround me with people, God, that can pour into your church. Um, if you don't know what the five-fold ministry is, it's in the scriptures. It talks about there being an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, and a teacher that actually supplements the church. And I begin to pray, God, put a prophet in my life. I ask you to bring someone in my life that's hearing your voice and can speak into my life. And he did that. Jesse McGriff is a gal that showed up in my life as a prophet. I recognize her as a prophet in my life. And she began to give me words about the church and about things in specific areas of my life, just saying, hey, I'm going to slow this at your feet. I feel God is saying this. And so I thought no one better than Jesse McGriff to help us learn about how God speaks. Amen. And so she's going to minister to you today. I'm super excited about it. And I'm going to give you some awesome pointers and ideas about how she's heard God speak into her life, how you can hear him speak into your life as well. Are you ready? Yeah. Buckle your seatbelts, Life White Church. Can you honor and welcome <laughs> Jesse McGriff? Get on up here. Let's go. Jesse, take it away today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, everybody. So most of you know me already. Pastor Jason made me sound really cool, actually. But um, most of you know me. For those of you that don't, hi, I'm Jesse. Um, I live here in Rapid City. Obviously, I'm part of the church. Love being part of the church. I have two awesome children, um, Hannah right there, Michael right there. I they asked me, they said, are you going to say anything embarrassing about us this morning? And I said, oh, you remember that one time? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, that. I'm going to mention that. So... Anyway, not going to embarrass them this morning, um, but I'm just really grateful to be up here, truly. Um, and a lot of you know, um, if you know me for you know, any space of time, you know that I have a very cheerful disposition most of the time. Uh, you probably know that I love coffee, and you probably know that I am uh, passionately, uh, I passionately love the Lord, okay? So you probably know those things about me, but uh, what you might not know is that I have never... Um, I haven't always, I should say, been like I am today. I haven't always been as fiery and as passionate for the Lord. And honestly, I'm kind of ashamed to say that I used to be what I would call, I coined it as like a convenient Christian because I was at a point in my life where I had the American dream. I had a perfect family. I had a perfect career. I had a perfect house. Everything you could want in the natural I had. And honestly, I didn't think I needed God for anything. So I would come to church and fist bump God, say, thanks for being God, you're awesome, go about my week, maybe pray for green lights, you know, on the way to work, that kind of thing. But I didn't, I didn't think I needed God for anything. I really didn't seek him. Um, you know, I read scripture here and there, but I was a convenient Christian. And then I say suddenly, because it really was suddenly, like a light switch going off, my life changed. And when I say changed, it completely changed. Uh, my life went dark, as I call it, right? So I went from a place in my life from having everything and needing God for nothing to having nothing and needing God for everything. So I came to a place in my life, I, I'll, I'll set the scene for you. Um, I was in a townhouse right after my divorce. I was in a townhouse with no furniture, okay? It was empty. There was nothing in there. It smelled kind of weird. Uh, nothing in there. I didn't have anything. I didn't have money. I didn't know. I didn't have a job at that point. I didn't know how I was going to feed my family. I didn't know how I was going to pay for the townhouse that I was in. I, I didn't know what to do. And to be honest, I was so hurt and in so much pain at that point that I was numb. I was like past the point where you feel that like fear, that anxiety. I was just numb. I was in so much pain. And all I could do was fall down on my knees. I couldn't even remember at that point any scripture. The only thing I remembered and that I prayed to God was a line from a song that says, if ever I need thee, my Jesus, it's now. And I said to God, I need you. For the first time in my life, I actually needed him. I needed him for comfort. I needed him for provision. I needed him for guidance. And quite honestly, church, I needed him to make it through the day. I didn't know what I was going to do. And 
I know that uh, I know that this is you're like, oh my gosh, this is like a really depressing way to start your sermon. But I just I want to encourage you, church, because God brought me out of that place, and it has a lot to do with this chair, which I will explain in a minute. I'll get to that. Um, but I just I want to let you know this morning that um, this this sermon, this word that I'm about to give to you, um, I didn't chat GBT this thing, okay? Yeah, I did. I actually, um, I did write it down on paper, but I just want to let you know that, like, the Lord has been stirring this in me for a year, and I just knew that it wasn't time, it wasn't time, but now it's time, okay? It's for such a time as this. So I'm here to just speak this word to you, and it kind of spurred from a question or a comment that I get a lot of times, and that is, you know, people will say to me, Jesse, I wish I could hear God like you can hear God. And honestly, every time that I hear that, it kind of guts me a little bit because the truth is you can. I'm not special, honestly. Like, I don't have some special recipe with God or anything like that. The reason that I am standing up here delivering this to you is that I listen. I listen to God. And I just want to encourage you. I honestly have a fire in my bones today to teach you how to hear the voice of God because church, it is so, so important in our walk with the Lord. And I know, like I said, I know that's really depressing, <laughs> but um, I just want to say, like, that, that place that I was in, a lot of you might be in that place. Maybe you have been in that place. And so I just, again, want to reiterate, like, be encouraged because God can bring you out of that 100%. So... If you have your Bibles with you, I would like you to turn to 1 Kings 19, verse 11. And as you're flipping there, I want to give you some context, like what we're looking at, okay? So Elijah, who we're talking about in this story, is a mighty prophet of God. So Elijah just went head to head, just him, with 450 false prophets of Baal, okay? He actually got together with them and taunted them, kind of. You know, he like basically said, I'm going to prove to you that my God is the one true God, okay? And Elijah, his faith was so powerful that he called down fire from heaven, okay? Called down fire from heaven. And then he graciously took all the 450 of the false prophets and he killed them, okay? So you like reality TV, drama, read the Old Testament, okay? So he killed them. So that that brings in our other character, Jezebel. She is the wife of King Ahab. Jezebel's not a nice lady. Like modern day vernacular, she's a Karen. Okay, we don't like Jezebel. She's not nice. So Jezebel was really angry because those 450 false prophets that Elijah just killed were hers. Okay, they were on staff for her, if you will. And false prophets are really convenient because they tell you whatever you want to hear. Okay. So she's not happy, right? She's not happy with Elijah. Um, And back then, basically what it equates to is she put on Twitter, on Facebook, Elijah, I'm going to kill you, okay? So she posts that, and Elijah, being this powerful, mighty prophet of God that just called down fire from heaven, he goes, I'm not scared of you because God's powerful. Actually, no, he doesn't do that, right? He sees that, and he runs, He runs scared. He doesn't even pack a bag. He's out of there, okay? So that's where our story picks up because Elijah is in a place that he should not be in, okay? He shouldn't be there. He's not not where he needs to be. He's obviously forgotten about the power of God because God is so powerful. He can call down fire from heaven, yet he's scared of one woman who says she's going to kill him, right? So I want to read this with you. This is after the fact. So 1 Kings 19 says, uh, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. The voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? That's God speaking, okay? 
So what's important about this scripture is to understand that the Old Testament represents in the natural everything that we modern day experience in the spiritual, okay? So when we look at this, we need to look at this in the natural, okay? So who in here is afraid of heights? Like, can I get a shot? I'm with you, I'm with you, rest of you, we'll pray for you, okay? Um, so Elijah is on the top of this mountain in a gap in the rock, okay? So he's up there real high in this little gap of rock, okay? And the scripture says that the wind came, shattered the mountain, like tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks. Now, like, I know if you've lived here, we've seen pretty strong wind, right? We've seen our neighbor's trampoline going through the yard, Okay, like we know strong wind here in South Dakota, but I just want to tell you, I have never in my life seen wind that could tear apart a mountain or shatter rocks. Okay, all of this happening while Elijah is on the top of a mountain. If it were me, I would be shaking in my boots halfway down the hill, getting to safety. Okay, but Elijah kept listening. Okay, and then it says, the earthquake came. Again, the mountains are torn apart. The rocks are shattered. He's in a gap in the rock. My first thought would be like, this is going to collapse and crush me. I'm going to die. So I'm going to be shaking in my boots halfway down the hill. We're taught to go to find the nearest door frame, right? Brace yourself. Get under a table, something like that. And Elijah is up there, and he keeps listening, okay? And then a fire comes through. I don't know what that would look like on the top of a mountain, but... Honestly, I, again, I don't even have to tell you what I'd be doing. Shaking in my boots, halfway down the hill, okay? But Elijah kept listening. And then God's voice came in a gentle whisper, okay? And I'm just going to tell you that all of those things that we just walked through, those are loud occurrences, okay? That's like earth shaking, yeah. rocks crashing. That's loud noise, okay? Okay? So it takes an ear that is fine-tuned to the voice of God to hear him after all of that noise. And all of that noise hit Elijah's natural ears, okay? I want to just clarify that there's natural ears, but Elijah heard with his spiritual ears, okay? He was listening for God. He kept listening. After all of those things, he knew God was going to show up, and he kept listening, All right, now I'm going to break the suspense over my prayer chair here. This, this is my prayer chair. Um, that's not my actual chair. My actual chair is like big and comfy and wraps you up like a hug. But this will do for now. This is my prayer chair. Um, ever since I became a Christian my junior year of high school, I've had a really strong conviction that I need a prayer chair. I need a chair, right, where I spend time with the Lord. And I actually won my first prayer chair by signing up the most people to the Pier 1 credit card. Um, I, re I repented of that later, but that's how I got my first prayer chair. So it's for free. <laughs> so anyway, my prayer chair is a place that I have grieved, I've cried, I've sat in silence, I've prayed, I've prayed again. But the most important part about my prayer chair is that that's where I learned to listen, okay? That's, that's the place that I would go when everything was a mess, when my world was chaos. I go to my prayer chair, and I listen. And I just, I want to again reiterate the fact that we're looking at this scripture with Elijah, with all these distractions. That's the natural. So what does that look like for us, okay? It's, like I said, that's the natural um, everything in the New Testament or us today, it's all in the spiritual, right? It's not these natural occurrences. So I would like to show you this morning and just walk you through what the scripture looks like for us, what it looks like today in the spirit for us. Um, Pastor Jason, could you step up here, please? And can I get my three volunteers up here on the stage? They're actually not volunteers. I volunteered them, but... <laughs> Voluntold. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, guys. So in this demonstration, if you will, this is the scripture that we just walked through, uh, displayed in the spiritual, okay? So Pastor Jason over there 
is going to represent God. Hello. Yes, he's God. <laughs> okay, I'm representing me. I'm just me. Um, Andrew here, he is going to represent the wind that we just talked about. Distraction number one, I like to call it. Okay, he's the wind. The wind is the cares of this life. Everything that tosses you here and there and distracts you from listening to the voice of God. Okay, that's Andrew here. So Owen here, I'll step behind you, Owen. Owen here represents the earthquake. Okay, the earthquake, if you will, is your sin, whatever's blocking you from God. Okay, the things that the things that you kind of think, oh, God's mad at me. I don't want to talk to him because I don't really think he wants to hear from me right now. That's what Owen represents. And then my beautiful friend Stephanie here represents the fire, okay? And the fire, so this is like distraction one, two, Stephanie's distraction three. The fire represents your idolatry, okay? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, anything that satisfies your appetite outside of God, okay? Uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, job, social media, yeah, I said it. Anything that satisfies your out appetite outside of God, okay? So I just want to walk you through what this looks like modern day and what I battle still to this day when I sit in my prayer chair and spend time with God, okay? So this is what it looks like. <clears throat> hey, God. You God, are you me. there? I am with oh, you always. God, I really need some encouragement today. You can trust me. Yeah, I just I had you. such a rough day, God. It was you. horrible. I am your refuge. God, are I you there? Like I need a scripture, something just to encourage me. You can trust me. God, I really need to hear your voice. I love you. Ugh. Are you mad at me? Like you I can't can hear you. Me. What's going on? I'm with you. Ugh, I, I can't hear you, God. I am your refuge. But you the scripture says that the Lord was not in the wind. Andrew, you can go and sit down. Trust me. And the scripture says that the Lord was not in the earthquake. You can go sit down. Good stomping. And the scripture says that the Lord was not in the fire. Stephanie, you can go and sit down. You can trust me. I'm for you. But the Lord's voice trust me in all your ways. was in a gentle whisper. I, make your path straight. You I hear you, God. I'm for you. Thank you, Pastor Jason. So that is what it looks like. Yes, give him a hand. My voluntold people. <laughs> so, I'll find my spot here. So as the verse says, the Lord was not in the wind, the earthquake, and the fire. And I just want to tell you, church, that we have to keep listening. You have to persevere. You have to keep listening. In the, God, like, I just want to say that, like, in this, be encouraged, because I'm not here to tell you, like, oh, my gosh, you're doing a terrible job. God wants to speak to you. He is passionate about his relationship with you, and he wants to talk to you through a clear pipeline, okay? Um, in the New Testament, the phrase, if you have ears to hear, appears 15 times. And every time it appears, every single time, it is spoken by Jesus himself. Okay? It's important. And I just want to say, like, it's important. Jesus is telling us that we need to hear. And church, I want to say to you this morning that some of you haven't found your ears. Okay? We need to listen. I want to go to a couple of scriptures that are just going to dial this in for us about listening to the voice of God. Um, if you could turn with me to John chapter 10, verse 3. So this is the parable of the shepherd. This is Jesus speaking, okay? Like I said, Jesus is always the one that says if you have ears to hear, okay? All right, so John chapter 10, verse 3. I love hearing the pages flick. So verse 3 says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the, sheep, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, 
and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Now, I just want to stop here and point out that following Jesus, this is out of the mouth of Jesus himself, is contingent on hearing his voice. Okay? So if you're following Jesus, you have to be hearing his voice. Because otherwise, there's a good chance you're going the other way. Okay? We have to hear his voice. Verse 5 says, But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Okay, so I love this verse because it highlights the fact that Jesus is not the only voice, okay? He's not the only voice, and this other voice, the stranger's voice, wants to lead you away from the Lord. And if you're not listening to the Lord's voice, that's where you're going, this is, this is a black and white situation. There's no gray area here. It's like you have to listen and hear the voice of the Lord or you're going to be led astray. And I love the fact, you know, that Jesus says too, he's like, they, they will not recognize a stranger's voice. They'll run away from it. So I just want to encourage you that like, if you hear the Lord, you're going to hear the imposter and you're going to run away for it, a.k.a. you're going to keep listening, okay? <clears throat> All right, I want to walk you through another scripture. So if you will turn with me to Revelations 3, verse 20. Okay, so again, this is in Revelation. This is Jesus talking. Jesus says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Okay, I just want to point out something here. Jesus says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. Okay, usually we'll open the door for a knock, right? Okay, but... I just want to point out the fact that it's not the knock we're listening for. We're not listening for this because guess what? Distraction number one is knocking on your door. The cares of this world, okay? Distraction number two, your sin, anything blocking you from God, your past, okay? That's knocking on your door, okay? And distraction number three, your idolatry, anything that takes you away from God, satisfies your appetite outside of God, that's knocking on your door. But we're listening for his voice. And this is so, so powerful because our life depends on hearing his voice. If we do not hear his voice in the midst of that knocking on our door, we won't open the door for him. That is such a powerful demonstration that Jesus has just laid out for us. Like, we have to hear his voice, church, because otherwise we will miss him. And it's so, so, so important that you hear because I just, I want to put out church just like the scripture said, there is more than one voice trying to lead your life. There are two other voices that you're going to hear on the daily that are trying to lead your life. Number one is the enemy. And scripture says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you follow the voice of the enemy, it will lead you to destruction, and the other voice is your flesh, okay? And scripture says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? If you follow your flesh, it will lead to destruction. And I just want to point out the fact, too, that um, these two voices, the enemy and the flesh, they're loud, they sound very much like the distractions that we just had here on the stage, very much like the winds, the earthquake, and the fire that Elijah experienced. They're loud. They are trying to distract you, to take you away from the voice of the Lord. So now that we know this, what do we do? Like, how do we, how do we fix this? What do we do? Well, you need to make room for God. You need to practice sitting in his presence, practice 
praying and saying, God, give me ears to hear what your spirit is saying. I pray that every night before I go to bed. God, give me ears to hear what your spirit is saying. And you have to keep doing that because persistence leads to obedience. I'll say that again. Persistence leads to obedience. I actually spent in my prayer chair, I spent, I can't even count, like, days, hours, praying the same prayer again and again and again, like the persistent widow in Scripture. I was like, God's going to be so sick of me, but I'm going to come and I'm going to keep praying and I'm going to keep listening until I hear his voice. I did not give up. I kept listening. And I want to encourage you, church, keep listening. And when you listen and when God speaks, we have to obey Because like Pastor Jason said a few weeks ago, when God speaks, there's action, okay? God doesn't just speak and nothing happens. There's action. We have to obey. We have to follow that. And imagine if we obeyed every single time, because every time that we obey the voice of God, our connection gets stronger, okay? Because I just want to point out a very important truth about the voice of God. The voice of God does not get louder but the connection gets stronger. The connection gets stronger so that you can hear that whisper in the midst of all that noise and all that chaos. So I just wanna encourage you, every single time you obey, that connection gets stronger. And it's little, it's, it's baby steps. I mean, I remember like God would tell me something and I would obey, and it's like I could hear him more. It was, it was like a, cl- a, a clearer pipeline. And now in my life, actually, my pipeline with God, it's like I've obeyed, I have that connection with God, and I listen, and it's actually such a powerful thing for me because I actually know if something's not right in my life based on that pipeline because I have that connection with God, and when I start to not hear him, that starts to go quiet, I know that something in my life needs to be rearranged, okay? I might be listening to too much other stuff. I need to clear my pipeline Um, I'm just going to throw in there, Pastor Jason mentioned 21 days of prayer. That is an excellent way to strengthen your pipeline, to strengthen your connection with God. So maybe, you know, I have my prayer chair, my spot that I go, but maybe for you making room for God, maybe your prayer chair is your drive to work and you turn your music down. Or maybe it's your step on the back porch, or maybe it's your dining table early in the morning, but wherever that is, keep praying and keep listening to God. Because uh, like I said to you before, God will speak. And let me just say that like God will honor your perseverance in this. He honors the fact that you show up and that you're listening And you're honoring the fact that he is speaking. Like Pastor Jason said, he is a speaking God. So he honors the fact that you show up and you listen. And I just challenge you to take inventory. Uh, You know, um, I want to be raw with you this morning, and um, I'll be the first to raise my hand, okay? But how many of you have stopped listening at distraction number one, cares of this world, tosses you around around? Okay, all right, leave your hand up for a second. How many of you maybe got past that, but distraction number two, your sin, you think God's mad at you? How many of you stopped listening at that point? Okay, now distraction number three, the idolatry, right? Anything that satisfies your appetite outside of God, how many of you have stopped listening at that point? Okay, thank you. And if you look around, almost every hand in this place is raised, okay? Okay. We all face these distractions. We all have these things come into our life, and we are all faced with a challenge from God to keep listening. So I want to encourage you to just take inventory of your life. What are those things? What are the things that are tossing you all around? What are the things that are, you know, blocking you, making you think that God's mad at you? Because I'm here to tell you God is not mad at you. He is waiting to speak to you. And I just encourage you, take inventory. Whatever in your life you need to clear out, you need to get rid of so that you can clearly hear the voice of God, do it. Take that time. Find your prayer chair. Find your spot that you can go and you can listen to God. I just want to encourage you, church, because God is so passionate about speaking to you. 
He cannot wait to speak to you, and I just encourage you, keep listening. I'm just going to pass it over to Pastor Jason. We want to give you the opportunity here this morning, wherever those distractions are in your life. I think it's so vital what Jesse brought forth about Elijah and the reality that these destructions and these distractions continue to get louder and louder and louder, but he chose to keep listening through every single one of them. And I just, I know there's every person in this room, those distractions are happening. And for some of you, you're, you're moving off those distractions. For some of you, those distractions have led a lot of your life. The wind, the fire, the earthquake, whatever it is, it, you see that distraction and you actually move off of it rather than waiting until God speaks. And one of the things we really want you to learn as the church is that we would learn to wait, that we would learn to wait it out, that we wouldn't move in anxiety, that we wouldn't move in fear, that we wouldn't move off the ruckus or the first thing that comes to our mind or is the biggest thing or the loudest thing, but we'd learn to move off the voice of God, that we would wait it out. And so we want to pray for you specifically today. If you're in this room and you feel like, I am, I am moving off these distractions, you might not even know which, what it is, but you know I'm moving out of the, loud, the loudness. I'm moving out of the clamor of life. We want to pray with you today. And our prayer today is that you'd have ears to hear. I want to ask God to pierce your spiritual ears to hear him this morning. And so I'm going to ask you to be bold if that's you in this room. Come right up here and line up today. We want to pray over you today for ears to hear. Those who have ears to hear. 